human beings have taken over the whole planet, but now we must learn to share it or else we will lose it. We have to outgrow tribalism, patriarchy, all our old ways, and we have to move fast because we're running out of time. This is a small planet, but there are more than 180 countries out there, over a thousand big ethnic groups, six billion large intelligent primates, all still fully equipped with the old primate reflex to get together in groups and treat everybody else as an enemy. We can't afford this kind of behavior anymore. Our numbers, our weapons, above all our consumption have all grown so great that we're now in acute danger of destroying our own environment. But the old tribal code still says, put your own people first, and to hell with everybody else. If we can't break this pattern, we're probably done for as a species. But can we? What we need is a test case, a place where tribalism has had free reign, a microcosm with all the divisions of the world in a single country, a place where they now have to cooperate despite all that, or else go under together. And there is such a microcosm. It's called South Africa. South Africa has 40 million people. They belong to a dozen major ethnic groups from Afrikaners and Punjabis to Jews and Zulus, and they speak 11 different languages. Some of South Africa's people live in the first world. Many more live in the third world. And there's a long history of war and racism and oppression all in a country that's only twice the size of France. If you want to understand the tribal mind, this is a good place to start. It's a particularly good place because the whole country has embarked on a heroic effort to move beyond tribalism. The all-race elections in April 1994 put an end to tribal politics in South Africa, at least in principle. So we followed a very special group of men and women through the final year before the election. I think what is the following week do? It's mis as much it opens. These are the offices of a newspaper called Freya Wirkblatt, the Free Weekly. You know, I'm going to run a story on our blood this week. And I'm not just going to run the story, you know, without a comment from Ben. I had an interview with some... It is 1993, and White Rule has just one year left. I can't believe you. Eddie! Did you want to take you? the people's army here. Max Dupree created this newspaper to say the things that no other paper would say, and to say them in Afrikaans, the language of the ruling tribe. Pearly Hubert is typical of the journalists he hired. They're young, they work for peanuts, and they don't give a damn for anybody in authority, including Max. These are people who are in the process of shedding their tribal skins. Wally Mbele is the paper's only black reporter. He was born a Zulu, but he sees himself as a South African. Even bad breath is okay. <laughs> Max Dupree and Pearlie Hubert are Afrikaners. They too are trying to grow into a broader loyalty. That's probably exactly what it's like. Yeah.
tribal thinking is the territory of the split-level mind. Us, who are real human beings with full human rights, and them, who are less than fully human and don't really have rights. You can even kill them if they get in your way. But now the tribal system is imploding. And nobody knows whether the country is heading for the first election where everyone has an equal vote or for a civil war. Why have they got permission to come in the middle of the night at gunpoint? So come like you are dealing with a dirty enemy here. The South African government is very dirty. As a Zulu, Wally Mbele really shouldn't be here. In fact, it makes him a potential target because the Zulu tribal leadership is literally at war with the party that's holding this rally. I have been doing a lot of stories about political violence. If you're a township president, you don't know whether you'll be alive the following day. Violence has become endemic in South Africa. Violence is endemic in all of human history because it's a tool of power. Tribalism could not work without it. Ten million people live within an hour's drive of downtown Johannesburg. A large minority are white, and they almost all drive to work in their own cars. They live in large, comfortable houses in suburbs that spread for miles, and most of them have servants. But over the past 20 years, walls have gone up around almost all the houses, because one tribe's gain is another tribe's loss. In the black townships around Johannesburg, unemployment is 45%. Millions of people here own nothing. So there are a lot of desperate people around. By 1993, Johannesburg has become the murder capital of the world. There are dozens of killings a day in this city. But now change is coming to South Africa, and Freya Wierkblatt is a key part of the process. Hello, um, I'm looking for a female that I could speak to in connection with women and politics. I've tried the ANC and um, without any luck. Now I'm desperate. <laughs> because they're all out or in meetings or they have to consult before they can talk to me. <laughs> And I was looking for Tenjiwe. I think you just you just gave me a, a, a number. Well, she's not available, apparently. And Janet Love isn't available, and Freni Gunwala isn't available, and do you want to hear some more? <laughs> so please, give me a communist to speak to. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Take it away. <laughs> it's a whole fucking day I spent to get hold of one woman in the fucking ANC. Now she's not in. Now she's drinking tea. Now she's in a meeting. For the needy profile, it would lead me. And as leaders, as mensen met graden, minstens een, meeste van de twee. Most of the people around this table belong to the white tribe that invented apartheid and ruled South Africa for almost 50 years. Freya Wierkblatt was the first paper to take the Afrikaner establishment on in their own language. And many other Afrikaners see the people who work for it as traitors. Is virtual reality? I always like to interview people that I like. Max Dupree is the chief traitor. It's a pity there aren't many of them. There aren't many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Dupree founded Freya Wierkblatt in 1988. We had a very aggressive confrontationist sort of style. Because that's just what was needed, you know. Insult the political leaders. And we insulted them in their faces. We called them names. The Afrikaner establishment was completely stunned. 
nothing like that had ever happened. They didn't know what was happening. We got, in the first two years of our existence, we were cr charged criminally 37 times. It's an all-time record, probably anywhere in the world. And the point where the world and all other South African newspapers started taking us seriously was when we broke the story of the police death squads and Dirk Kutsia. Dirk Kutsia commanded the police death squad. But most white South Africans refused to believe their own government was deliberately murdering people who opposed the regime. And for the first time, we had the leader of the death squad saying, here I am, this is my face, this is my name, this is my history, and this is what I had done over pages and pages and pages and pages. And I was a bombshell in this country. It was a turning point in terms of politics, it's a turning point in terms of the security services, the security forces in this country, and certainly also for this newspaper, a turning point. On this day, Wally Mbele is working on a story about refugees. South African citizens, born an hour's drive from where Wally himself grew up, who've had to flee their homes in Natal province. South Africa and Bosnia and Somalia and Northern Ireland and the First World War and the Second World War and the Vietnam War and the Arab-Israeli Wars. At least 23 people died. The bigger tribes fight bigger wars, but the principle is the same. Baraguana Hospital at the entrance to Soweto, the biggest black township in South Africa. A bloody weekend with at least 68 lives lost to violence, mainly in Natal and on the East Rand. Tribalism is a political technique human beings devised so we could live in big groups. A very effective technique, but very nasty. Where were you shot? The whole point of tribes is to turn millions of individuals